Okay. Well, okay, we're going to start. Uh, well, hello everyone and welcome to Miao. Today we had the pleasure to be with Andrea Rocha. Uh, Andrea is an artist who has mastered digital painting focusing on environments. He studied architecture and has developed his career as a concept artist. His artwork is fantasy and sci-fi theme. If you want to know more about Andrea Roches and the process that he uses in his paintings, you can visit him on Patreon. And um, what well, Patreon? Maybe you don't know what is, uh, but well, we will explain later. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. Uh, so. Go. Wait. Uh, here's your. Um. Well, uh, my name is uh, Andreas Rocha. I live in Lisbon, Portugal. I'm 40 years old. Um, um, I studied architecture, like you, but I only practice it for uh, uh, two, two years. And at the time, I, besides doing projects, uh, I did also 3D renderings and uh, things related to imagery to present the um, projects to the clients. I did that for two years. Then uh, after that, I went to work uh, on a firm that did 3D rentings exclusively. I, I learned a lot there. And, and But all of this was always related to 3D renderings and things like that. However, in, in during my study in the, the second year of college, I learned about Wacom tablets. That's, I don't know if I can show it to you. No, well. Um, we are, uh, uh, maybe, Andreas? Yeah? Maybe if you want, maybe you can. Uh, we are seeing now your, your, your desktop, your Photoshop. Ah, maybe, exactly. Uh, okay, you want to show something? Maybe you can check the no, screen. No, 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 no problem. It's, it's not okay. important. It's, it's just, I was just showing the, the tablet, the Wacom tablet I use. And uh, I, I found about that in the second year, and I'd always always liked um, drawing and uh, and painting. So um, when I when I found about the the Wacom tablets, it was great for me because now I could uh, paint things more realistically on the computer. Um, but that was always a hobby from the second to the fifth year in college. And then when I was doing the 3D renderings, it was always a hobby. Then I went to that firm for three years. And then I thought, no, I want to try and work and do this. Um, I want to do this um, as a... I want to start doing this professionally. And, and things started to... Um, Uh, work proposals in digital painting started to, to come up. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the last uh, six or seven years, I think. So I work as a freelancer doing concept art. It's mainly focused on uh, fantasy art and science fiction. And so I'm going to show you the... This is a presentation of my portfolio, and I will start with the, the first uh, the first paintings that I think are uh, there. This is just the, the be beginning, uh, so you can see the how my work developed from from start to finish. Um, these were my first tests on doing environments. These were done in 2003, so it was 13, 14 years ago, and it was very experimental at the time, and there was also not much information on the, on the internet about digital painting, and we, the people that worked digitally, they just shared their, their work, and we commented, but there was not a very big community, unlike today, where there's a big a CG art community and it's great to, to share and um, to show each other's our work. These, this is just, I, I don't like this at all, it's, um, but I wanted to show you how things evolved from 13 years ago to, to now. 
I, this was I, I one like of the them. first paintings. <laughs> I like them. They are they are nice. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this this is the the first painting. One of the first paintings that I liked to I, I liked the outcome, and this was in 2004, and it was the first environment piece I had done because before that I only did. Um, Portraits and, and anatomy paintings and things like that, but it, it was nothing. I think most people that start to paint do start with that, but then I changed to environments slowly, gradually, and and it it was quite more interesting to me. This was in, in two thousand four. I'll just I don't know if you can see this here, this this number, but this shows more or less the the year that um these paintings were done. Um, I participated in an online uh, CG challenge and this was the first time that I spent a lot of time doing a painting. I think it's, I spent about, I don't know, 40 hours, so it's ridiculous. Uh, nowadays I never, I never spent that much time doing a painting. Um, and things started to evolve. Uh, I started to introduce a story and instead of being just a sketch. I started to invest more time in my paintings and they are always, as you can see, they're always related to fantasy and because I love fantasy movies and uh, during the 80s, that's when I grew up as a child, uh, they, those were my favorite movies like Back to the Future, Star Wars, uh, Indiana Jones and all the things that I painted was always related to, to these subjects. Here I started, I don't know if you know, in Lisbon there is a famous tower, it's the Torre de Belém. It's a very famous landmark here in Lisbon and it was built during the, um, during the discovery of the, 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 the sailors and I took that as reference and created a painting from there. Something, some of my work is more uh, painterly. Uh, where you can see a lot of the, the brush strokes. This, for example, was was based on a on my trip. I, I don't know if I had been there or if it was a photo from Barcelona, and uh, and the, the Venetian blinds that are very common there in some of the, the buildings. Okay. Do you use, uh, do you uh, some use of the you can you will see that the subjects change dramatically because this is very painterly. Uh, but this is uh, like a uh, photographic, but I did them all. So uh, it's, I, I try to, now, nowadays I, I'm focused on a certain style, but at the time I, I try to tackle and try to experience a lot of different techniques. And this was one of my first attempts at matte painting that uh, you probably have heard of it. It's uh, when you, in the, in the movies, they, 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 they film the characters uh, behind a blue screen or green screen, and then the back is painted, and there's a lot of pho photography involved and 3D modeling nowadays, but at the time this was all done with uh, photos. Uh, another matte painting, and there are parts of sky, this was a 3D model, uh, with some integration of photos here and you can see it it has a big resolution there's a lot of detail in it and I think this one took me three days to to complete again doing uh, more painterly work <laughs> another matte painting inspired by a coastal landscape here near Lisbon that that is very it's it's great it has some very wide vistas uh, to to the ocean and I, I take some of the the things that I see and apply them to my paintings and come up with different worlds and different ideas sorry that this is the image that we have used for the well for the Facebook poster but uh, the last the other one the last one the other one ah. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, that, uh, uh, that's the one you use uh, as a promotion, and there's, this is also something that 
I end up doing a lot of my paintings is the castle on top of a hill in a fantasy landscape and everything very, very white. It's something I really like to portray. But I think before, well, in the last, in the <coughs> projects that you made years ago, like the other one or the previous one, you used to make some, uh, what, some, uh, some elements in three dimensions. And, and now it's more like everything is in 2D, no? Or yeah, uh, 2D, yeah. This, um, this, for example, had no 3D behind it, but this one, I think it was more experimentation. I, I built this uh, in 3D Studio Max, the, the model. Uh, I don't think it had any textures. The textures were then um, painted in. This is photo overlays, the, but the the geometry helps to um, to get the perspective right. But uh, nowadays, I I think it's perhaps because I'm lazy, but um, I, I prefer to, to paint everything with a tablet because using 3D models as a base can be a bit um, uh, can constrict your um, your painter, uh, your painterly uh, movement. So it's something that um, with, with 3D it's a bit limiting, and the painting it's 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 freer and it's more uh, it's more interesting. Um, and this one, for example, this was one of the last uh, perhaps examples that had a lot of 3D because I built almost the whole model in in 3D. Uh, but but this has nothing to do with the uh, with the model. It's there's a lot of painting uh, here on top of this. Um, but there's a lot of 3D modeling here. But if you if you saw the 3D model that was behind this, you wouldn't find it interesting. There, the 3D model in my case is just uh, something that you use as a base and to help you out with the painting. <laughs> Uh, again, some this I think took inspiration from scenes from Prague. Uh, some science fiction that I also like to do once in a while. And here, uh, nowadays I use Photoshop exclusively, but uh, there's another piece of software. It's called Coral Painter. I think it's Coral, and it's supposed to mimic. Uh, acrylics and oil and things like that, but it's something that you can do in Photoshop also. Um, but at the time I was experimenting a lot in different kinds of software, different kinds of finishing. Um, this is an example of concept artwork for a, for a game. Uh, most of the, the work I'm showing you is, is personal for my portfolio. But some of the works, I, for example, this is is a real uh, job um, where mm. the client gives me a guy uh, gives me the description of the scene. Sometimes they give me a model, and from there I just sketch and paint and show the image to the client, and the image gets refined. Here you're only seeing the final stage. Here, for example, another attempt at matte painting. These um, orbs were modeled, but that's the only part that was modeled. And because uh, the rest of the um, landscape is, is painted mostly photography in this one, a lot of photo photographs that are combined then to create the final painting. Uh, I, include, I included this because it's, it's important to show that uh, when you see a finished painting, it's not just uh, the painting as a start and a finish. Uh, the, there's a lot of experimentation before. Sometimes I do these kind of sketches. And here it was more um, to, 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 to create new sketches that would eventually create finished paintings. But um, each of these concepts, sketch, is a completely different subject. But there's a lot of experimentation behind it. And um, I don't know if you can apply this to, to, to doing um, architectural projects or not, but when I work on several sketches simultaneously, several ideas, it's good because it keeps my mind fresh and I jump from 
from this painting to that, to that, to that. And I always keep working on one part in this one, one another small part in the other, and it keeps my eyes fresh. So it's, it helps me a lot to, to work on these small sketches uh, simultaneously. Um, here, this was a, a poster for a, a Portuguese movie, and the director wanted to have um, a Hollywood look, I, I believe. Uh, so I work with him closely. These planes are 3D renderings, but the rest is all painted in, and uh, photography. Um, here, there, although this was to, supposed to look like a matte painting, there's, uh, th there's also no 3D modeling involved here, but there is a very strict uh, perspective guidelines and all these um, ropes were painted, but uh, for example, this one, I, I took it of a photo from a, a ship but there's always a lot of mix of different techniques, painting, photography, 3D modeling, um, and, and mix all of those techniques together. Another example of sketching, uh, simultaneous sketching, this was closely inspired by Blade Runner, the movie that I love it, and it has some great scenes and environments and moods and as I was painting this, I had some screenshots of the movie beside me, so I used the, the moods to create these two sketches. And this one was created... A lot of these paintings are also uh, inspired by, um, by things, uh, things, places I, I travel to and that inspire me. This one was with, from Scotland and all the greenery. It's, it's a very inspiring uh, landscape. Um, again, some fantasy-themed environments. I think this, yeah, this was done for an online Facebook game that was very popular at the time. Um, another attempt at matte painting, but this is almost more a painting than than photo real. You can see that there's a lot of. You can almost see the the brush strokes. But um, uh, this one, for example, is a lot more photoreal. There, there is no, there is no modeling involved. But um, in these cases, I always have to use a, a guideline, perspective guideline, so I don't mix up. Uh, so the perspective stays realistic. The, 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 I think this was done for a matte painting challenge, and the theme was 2012, I think, because of the. Nostradamus, the, the end of the world prediction, and uh, I think at the time, yeah, I think this was done at the end of 2011, and this was my vision of the end of the world with a giant wave crashing in into this um, uh, city. And do you use, when you paint, uh, do you use photos, let's say for example, to use textures, or do you prefer to paint everything with this mainly no, this, this, for example, was, uh, if you can... Uh, I can, this is all uh, parts of photography of buildings that were cut and then combined. And these buildings don't exist. And these photos, for example, here there's a lot of photography involved. But uh, most of the time I use a painting as a base. And I, I'll, I think I will show this in some of the examples where you can see that a strong sketch is 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 very important to to get the overall painting to to get something that's worthwhile looking. If you start uh, throwing photos right from the beginning, sometimes it it looks that it looks like a photo collage, and um, there's something that doesn't combine all the photos. So if you have a good underpainting, a good sketch, from there you can put a, put put the photos on top. Even the texture of that wave. Sorry, the way that you see, yeah, that one. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 you're, you're right. Um, if you see, I don't know how much detail you can see, but this is painted. Mm -hmm. But here, it's photography. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but there's a lot of painting and repainting until all the elements are combined together. And these these parts that these parts of the wave that go inside the, the crashing of the waves, I think is all painted. Um, but it's, it's nice how you mix them because well, sometimes when you paint something and you mix with photo, if there is a, a contrast that is. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and once and when I put the, the photo inside, mm -hmm. uh, if I don't repaint it several times, it's in the end it just looks like it looks there's something wrong because you can see the photo uh, and the painting and something doesn't connect. This was done for uh, Lego, the, the brick, the toy brick company. I do a lot of work for them, but um, it's not something that I can show. Uh, this, this I can show because I, I don't think it was ever used. Um, a job for um, a book uh, promotion. The, the, the client wanted to use this image as a banner for their, for her. Um, a web page promoting the book. Another cover. This was done for um, a Spanish artist. Artist uh, Spanish. Um, he's not a composer. He does uh, for, um, audio samples to be used for uh, uh, music, and he creates the, the instruments. And it was the 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 packaging was for a fantasy. Uh, inspired sounds that you would hear in a forest, and so I came up with this image. Um, well, I can show you, so you don't see on, you don't only see images. I will show you the process that I used for for this image. Give me just one minute. Um, sketch I sent to the client and there is some photography involved and I painted only in black and white because painting in black and white helps me to get all the values right because the most important part usually are the values and artists have all their ways of uh, some artists start to work in color some start to work in black and white for this in me, I also sometimes start to paint in black and white, sometimes direct in color, but working in black and white helps a lot to, to establish the values, the, the brights and the darks right from the beginning. And you can see from between these two stages, it's a refinement and I think there is even a part of the, the photo I, I used. I don't know which photo I used, but there are parts. So the client sees the image, then says, oh yeah, you can change this and this, and then it evolves to that. This was the base I used to create the, um, the, the color and the painting. So this was the actual resolution for, for the sketch, to which 500 by 500, which is quite small. From there, I resized it to 3000 by 3000. This was for a CD cover. So it was a square, square format. And here you can see, although it looks very monochromatic, you can see there are already uh, some application of color. Green, very muted. I start to introduce some lighting effects. Um, and here I already established the overall uh, color harmony, so everything revolves around greens and yellows. And for this painting, it's something that I use sometimes. Uh, I I started to detail the painting in areas. Sometimes I detail everything gradually, but with this one, you can see that this part was finished first. Then I went to this. You can even see the rectangle I used. I don't know if you can make it out there. Uh, it's a red rectangle. And I move it around the, the canvas, so I start detailing parts 
of the only inside the rectangle. And then there are also color adjustments made. Detailing, now I start detailing the, the tree. I don't think I used any photo textures here, it was all painted, but one thing that I sometimes use to, to quicken the, the process is I copy parts of the image and then I, that are already painted and then copy them throughout the painting. So, and this is the final where there is post-production. You can see that everything is brighter. I introduce these very subtle volume lights, these beams, and this is the, the final image that you were seeing. Oh, sorry. Uh, how long does it take you to, to finish <coughs> a painting like this? Um, one thing that helps is to... I don't start a painting on at 8 o'clock in the morning and finish it at 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, if you stay too focused on one painting, it, it doesn't help and you can't see the flaws. So I can tell you, I, this was done throughout uh, two weeks perhaps. Uh, one hour here, 30 minutes there, three hours there. But uh, totaling is, I don't know, probably four to five hours for this painting. But it's something that's done with a lot of intervals. Sorry, Andrea, but how, how do you control light? Because in that one, it seems that it's rendering. Uh, I mean, the light is lightening all the defects that you draw. So how, how do you do it? It's, it's about post-production, but how do you...? Um, if you see it, this... this um, here, the, the contrast, it's very important to establish the contrast, so... The human eye is attracted to contrast. If an image doesn't have contrast, the, the viewer loses interest. So right from the beginning, it's important to establish contrast. Here, I established that the, the light was behind the tree, so the tree was darker because it was in, in silhouette. Uh, uh, it was backlit. Mm -hmm. And then there's something you see that here and here, it's like painting in light. I use a very soft brush. Um, here, I don't know if I used it, but a lot of the times, uh, I don't know if you all, I think you all use Photoshop, correct? You know how to use Photoshop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, one of the favorites, let me, let me just show you, sorry. If I take this image, if I create a color dodge layer, this image is, is very dark. If I create a color dodge layer, I use a, this is a very soft airbrush, it's something like this. I use it large. The opacity is 30%, so it's quite low. And this is something that I don't know if you what type of imagery you create, and you will see um, an example which I did with uh, last year's student. Um, but you can use this technique on your images to to introduce a warm sunlight. It doesn't need to be warm, but it's very. I just use a, a warm color here, very dark, and when I start. Painting. I'm going to put the. Sorry. I think he's still. Is it too dark? Yeah, probably. I'm just painting it along the areas that should be receiving light. I'm gradually. Seems easy. <laughs> yeah, it is easy. Color dodge, because it's it's a great um, color mode. I'm painting here on top, and you notice that the black part is not receiving any light. So it's almost like you're painting in with light. I don't exactly know how it's how the the color dodge mode works, 
but I'm and now I'm going to start to refine it here. Uh, the, the parts that and here through the between the again the going for the soft brush. And for example, I think if you wanted to do this uh, as if it was uh, moonlight, you just I use the uh, hue saturation uh, color adjustment. And I just change it to blue. Probably it's too strong like this. Desaturate it and darken it a little bit. Um, again, paint perhaps here where it should be strongest. And this is a thing that I use. So this was before. This is now. And this is something that you will see uh, in a lot of my paintings is this volumetric light that I paint in with a, a very soft brush and um, using the color dodge because if you use the screen I don't it looks washed out the, the good thing about color dodge is that it only affects the um, and it gives a very strong color and it's something that you, you see in real life uh, when you when you do some this kind of, uh, of paintings, I think the most important part is the first sketch, where you can regulate the, the light with the white and black uh, brass, right? Because then when you add the color, it depends on the shadows, but you have to draw first that the shadows are lights. I think that's the m most important part. Yes, uh, I don't know if I understood your, your 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 question correctly, but this this uh, part this is not something that um, I think this is done with experience. You 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 can't paint like this uh, when you start. Uh, I, I, I you have a lot of experience from painting, so th this black and white that's because I, that's why I was um, telling you that it's very important the the value phase because. This is where the eye detects all the. Um, this is the most important part: is the the control of the values. Because when I go to the to the final to the final image, uh, this base that I had in the beginning, it's still there. The 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 tree in the middle, backlit, and and the colors in the back, and the the the, the light in the back. But this initial this initial sketch is very important. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that was your question or... Yeah, I think it wasn't a, quick, uh, a question. Ah, we're just like pointing a... out, okay, yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, you will, but sometimes, I don't know if one of the examples I will show you, um, I sometimes start to use color right away because uh, sometimes it's also important to have some color variation in the work. Uh, which doesn't happen so here, for example, it's also a similar, similar technique. Uh, I don't know how I started, but uh, all the, the value is very important with the silhouettes here and then painting in the, the soft light, which gets lost here in the shadows. But it's also very important that in the shadows there is also detail. You can see there is a, a lot, I think, I don't know if, no, this is all painted, but uh, there's a lot of uh, small details here. But the shadows should also have some some detail. Um, here's a, a lot more painterly um, experimentation with brushes that are soft and noisy at the same time. Um, because that's the, the human eye is attracted to contrast, but it, sh it doesn't have to be contrast in... For example, this is a, a good example of, of contrast that the human eye is attracted to contrast. It doesn't have to be contrast of white and black and white, uh, light and shadow. It can also be contrast between saturation. So this is saturated, this is desaturated, between soft and hard, noisy, between architecture and nature, so between straight lines, uh, between 
lost and found edge, found edges. So this is a very defined line. But once you get here, it gets lost between the shadows. And this is when you are scanning a painting. If you have a lot of contrasts, the, the eye gets entertained, and you like to to watch the image because it's like you, the, the the painter is entertaining you to explore this image. This image when you see these crashing waves, you some areas are soft, some are defined, and if you can capture the the, the viewer's eyes for uh, some time to to scan the painting, I think the the painting is successful. Um, here again with uh, fantasy, and this is a very popular painting in my in my portfolio. And I don't know, probably you have noticed, but this is the um, I had the, this. Uh, where is it? This small sketch here, I took it. This was done in 2009, and then so that's something I do frequently. I pick the sketch, and then in two years later, I just uh, resized it and started to detail it. And this is more blues and greens, and this is more browns and yellows, but uh, I just go ahead and start to detail it and create a new painting. Again, black and white sketches, all fantasy related. And this was done for an online CG art course. Um, here, I think most of these were, if not all of these were, start, uh, were again thumbnail sketches. I don't know how much detail you can see in them, they are on your screen. Um, but these are all expl um, exploratory sketches to explore ideas for a new painting and you will see in my I think I have them some of these I ended up uh, creating finished paintings I think you will see it with this and this one I don't know if I included all and both of them this said also there was also a small sketch not in the previous page was this one as ended up from started from a small sketch like the the ones you saw before this one uh, this, uh, sorry, this one. You can see it here with the small boat and the lake and the ruins and then it ended up, so I darkened the whole image. Again, the contrast between uh, here it's war uh, warm and cold, uh, the fogs and that's also something very present in my work is the, these hazy areas with atmospheric perspective because it's also something that entertains the eye and it takes away some of the detail, but it creates mystery, and it's also something that draws the, the viewer's eyes. Do you think there are a difference between the the draws that are planned are the ones that are more spontaneous? I mean, the the people that ask you for some stuffs, do they ask you to have the things planned already, or? Do you uh, yeah. On your own when now? the client asks me and they have a very defined idea, usually things don't work out so well, mm -hmm. uh, and the the outcome isn't. I don't think I I'm showing any of those paintings. But sometimes mm -hmm. even the, the the client says, yeah, I, I know it's the artist. It's good to give you some freedom. So this is the basic idea. Uh, show me what you can up, come up with. Uh, and sometimes I, I make not so many sketches, but I can do four sketches and give them to a client. And um, it ends up being spontaneous. Although the, the idea was the sketches are um, worked before, but it's all very spontaneous. There is no defined idea. And I think those paintings are the most successful that are very organic. Start with a small sketch, then it gets bigger. The client asks for changes, uh, and the, the clients, although sometimes it's, it's, it seems like the client is always saying, no, you have to change this, I don't like this, uh, and you say, no, but this is my vision. No, the, usually the client has uh, the right idea, and it's always good to have somebody to, to criticize your paintings, and, paintings or your work and, and to guide you to, to make small corrections. Um, 
again this uh, yeah this was also this was the upper sketch again Blade Runner inspired and I think it's worth showing you the, the evolution of this one too um, this is the image that you have in your in your Facebook no uh, uh, yes I think so as your main portrait, or how it is, I don't know how it's called, huh? the main yeah, image. Yeah, the, the, the banner, yeah. The banner, yes. So, uh, this started in Painter, I think the, the, the initial sketch was done in Painter when I still used it. Very rough uh, brush strokes. And things start to evolve, there is no defined idea, it's just a vague idea of a, of a street and some lights, but once I start doing the, ma the marks, <laughs> I start to evaluate my own painting and uh, define things from there. <laughs> and you can see that, um, I think, yeah, uh, larger brush strokes, small brush strokes uh, that I paint here and there to give more details, and then the final atmospheric perspective and post-production phase. This is for the sketch. When I have a sketch that I'm happy with, I'll take it, I'll resize it, and start detailing it. That's what I did here. Again, I used the technique to to define some areas, finish some areas, and not work on the whole painting. Sometimes I do this is to add canvas size below or above. That's something that's very easily done in the digital world. Um, working traditionally, it's, I don't even know, how, I think it's possible, but uh, uh, it's not, it's not very straightforward. And working digitally, it's very easy to crop and make it bigger, make it smaller, make it more horizontal, more vertical. Some ideas are introduced, for example, this, this guy on the bike, uh, but then it is removed. There's a lot of experimentation. Uh, and in the final stage, uh, again, atmospheric perspective and painting on top and uh, introducing some other details. Um, do you think, would be, uh, how important um, are the brushes in your, when you paint? I mean, could you use, could you paint with, a round, with the normal round brush of Photoshop? Or, is, uh, or do you yeah, make a lot uh, of use with the... Yes. The, you can paint with a round brush, it has advantages, but uh, through the years uh, I start to, um, to know what works for me and what doesn't. And here, in my Photoshop, I have... Uh, sorry. I have these, these painting, uh, these um, brushes, these marks, uh, but in the end, now, I, what I'm using now is the tool presets, and you can see, I in, in my paintings, uh, I end up using, I don't know, five or six brushes. Uh, for example, this is a soft airbrush. Sorry. Um, this is something more uh, painterly, like uh, a normal traditional brush. This one is one of the ones I use a lot. It's not completely, it's not round, it's a bit... Uh, and this is the, the one that comes with Photoshop, so it's not a, it's nothing special, but I use this a lot. And yeah. something a bit harder, the same brush, softer, so and here's, I also use, sometimes I use this one a lot because it's it's good, it's opaque and it leaves interesting marks. Then there is a small brush and through the years you start to to understand what works for you and your, um, uh, you adapt the brushes to, to your own workflow. Um, but that's something that comes with, uh, with experience. Um, Again, done for a cover for the same Spanish uh, music producer. This was for uh, sounds inspired by um, uh, 
the Middle East, things like that. This was done for uh, an advertising for a company that had these 3D surround uh, boxes, speakers. And the, the main idea was for the, the idea they gave me, uh, we want a, a movie theater that looks like this, what's, what's showing on the screen is becoming alive and the audience is transported into the, um, into the scene. So I came up with this where you can see the screen but the vegetation and the rocks, there is a fusion between these both worlds. And this is all done with the Photoshop and paths and things like that. There is no photography. I, the, I think the only photos here, sorry, there's a lot of photos, but a lot of paint. It, it's, there is no 3D modeling here. Where, where do you recognize mm, most the the role of the Wacom. I mean, would you be able to do all this work without the Wacom, or not at all? No. Um, yes, you would, but this, uh, you will see the finished image, but for me to, to make a balanced image like this, you have to have a strong sketch from the beginning, again, that controls the darks and the lights and the colors and things like that. And I think that's something that you can only do with um, with a Wacom because it's like painting and drawing. Um, but if you have a sketch already, uh, you can certainly do it with a mouse because, uh, for example, this movement that I'm doing here, you can do it with paths and the pen tool and, and a lot of the work that is uh, related to 3D renderings like cutting out people or introducing glows and things like that. It's a very defined work. It's, it shouldn't be painterly when you're pre, uh, when you're presenting architectural projects, and most of those can easily be done with the mouse, because it's a lot of very precise cutting of objects and things like that. Uh, but if you're creating a new image, I think there should be the strong sketch from the beginning, and that I think is. It should be done with a Wacom, with a tablet, because it's, you have to have that freedom to, to come up with an image. If, if you paint it with a mouse, it's too constricted, and it doesn't give you that uh, spontaneous uh, feeling for the, for the image. That, that's what also makes it appealing. But there, there's an artist, uh, but he doesn't paint things like that. He paints things that are very like airbrush and characters and he's called loopy dave and he only uses the mouse and when you see the things that he creates you wow he created with with just with the mouse and he says yeah i know i'm crazy but that's the way i work and uh, but i think these kinds of work it doesn't make much sense to to use it to do it just with the mouse and um, because you need a lot of gestural uh, movements and brush strokes, and that's what makes also the, the image interesting. Um, these, these four, I wanted to speak, these were done for an animatic, for a, a video, for a presentation of a racing game. And they wanted to present these four scenarios. This, I think, is in California. This is in, I don't know, I think it's Chicago. Um, this was a race, I, I think, in Miami. And this is Yas Marina. I think it's in the Middle East. I'm no racing fan, so I don't know. Um, but they gave me they gave me color scripts. They they gave me the color harmonies. They gave me a base render, and I can show you for this one also the the process. So you can have an idea of the um, of the layering. Uh, wait. Okay, here I'll show the process of one of the images. This is the rendering they gave me. This is the render of a car. They cut it out very crudely, very rapidly, and some of the elements they painted in, and they said, yeah, this is the, we want you to create a realistic image from this. So I took it, and I started to paint on top. I, I, I didn't use this as a base. 
again, the importance of the sketch to get the colors, the overall colors right. So I started to paint with my brushes. And I think, yeah, this is the sketch that, that I presented to them and that said, yeah, that's, that's okay, now I'll go ahead and do the finished image. And from here, I think I already used some layers, but then with this, I, I took the rendering they had, draw, drew, made a line drawing just to have as a guideline. And from there, I used my sketch to come up with uh, this image. And from there, I started to overlay uh, photos and make the, this final image that was used by the 3D team to create the 3D model for the animation. And I will show you the, the Photoshop file. The transition between steps seems like uh, magic. I mean, since you are with her and you are hiding <laughs> secrets to us. Uh, no, between. because I will show you the, the Photoshop file here for this one. Um, okay. This is the um, this is only the, the final organization of the this is not I didn't start with the background and just started to put layers on top, but this will give you an idea of how things are more or less organized. This is the sky. I will, I will just start to show the, the layers one on top of the other so you can see more or less how the image is organized. Uh, I don't use this technique to for most of my paintings that are more painterly and fantasy. This is uh, to create these kind of images for, for these types of clients. This is the way I work. And, but I usually don't work with this uh, layer organization. So you can see there is a photo. And I'm, let me see if I can explain this. When I'm creating this image, I don't just see the, the sky layer. I, I see one layer on top and I, because you can see the, the, the sea here, but the only thing that interests me is this uh, cloud formation here in the back. And I didn't take this photo like this. There's already, some photo uh, color mani manipulation and glows I already painted on top of this. Then there is some darkening of the top, some additional blue in the light on the left upper corner. Here is the sea that you can see only part of it. So that's why this is so crude, but this part doesn't show up. Uh, you can see the horizon to, to blend the horizon. And to, to lose this to lose this crisp edge, paint over it. Then there is a coast. Everything painted. Introduce some haze. Then the road. This is a photo that I combined. Um, the lower corner is darkened. Cables from the. Um, I will put up the three. The posts, the cables, and the and the birds. The shadow from the from the lighting post or the electricity post. I know, sorry, the shadow from the car and the car. This is something that I I can move around. And the bystanders. I think there's a flare. So, and each of them is individual, and the shadows all below. Shadow with the car. You can see it's very photographic, but once I, I do some color adjustments, I darken it and then create a haze and now it's integrated. If you put it like this, it doesn't look right. <laughs> but once you put it like this, it, it makes sense in the scene. The car in the front, again, it's too dark. Uh, this is some of the dirt that comes from the road. Uh, more dirt. And, and working in this kind of layer organization is also important to show the client. So he says, no, I want less dirt, I want more dirt. Uh, this is something that gives me a lot of flexibility. A lens flare there in the corner that you can hardly see. And then very important, uh, the post-production in the end that makes the whole adjustment. This is composed 
of several the color balance it's very very slight very it's very soft uh, that color adjustment photo filter to make everything a bit warmer just by themselves it looks like I'm not changing anything but if I turn them all off yeah you I don't know how much quality you have there but Good. you can see everything shifts to board towards magenta yeah. then a glow yeah the, the final mm -hmm. glows on the metallic parts to, to integrate the and yeah, this was the initial sketch that was approved by the client, and this is the final image. And, and uh, yeah. How many is the, the average uh, size of your Photoshop files? The I mean, Photoshop file depends something? on the size of the image. In this case, uh, the image is quite small. It's just uh, 2,000 pixels wide, because this is a conceptual image that the client just needed for the 3D modeling thing to use as reference, uh, but most of the paintings that I showed you have around 4,000, 5,000 pixels in width. The Photoshop file size here, the, the memory, it depends on the, the amount of layers, but uh, for example, the works I do for Lego have a lot of layers and they sometimes they one one gigabyte, they come to two gigabytes in memory, so I put a lot of memory. but. If you want to create something like this, you don't need a lot of uh, memory, and uh, even if you have a lot of layers. So, and for painting, sometimes it's important to that, that there is no lag. If you have too many layers and the images to size, you cannot work. And for this kind of painting work, painterly work, it's important that you have a lot of uh, speed when, while you're painting. Um, for this kind of painting. Uh, do you work in, in 8 bits? 8? I mean, 8 bits in. Eight yes, bits. yes. Um, you only need to work on 16 or, or 13? No, no, I never worked, and I don't think anybody who works, uh, who, who does this kind of painting works. I, I think this is more work for for the cinemas and 3D renderings where they do a lot of post production and a lot of. They need a lot of the details from the shadow to show up. Uh, but this for this kind of work, it's just eight bits, and because it also makes everything more, it's it's quicker to work like that. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to show you another one, but this one I I will just show you the the layers. Uh, this one also had no, there's no 3D rendering involved here. Um, th there is this 3D render that they sent me as a base. But I painted everything on top. Uh, the city photos, uh, facade on the on the right side, the glow to come make everything, the posts, uh, structure. And this was all painted. But this was, for example, I cannot paint this. I have to paint this with a very the lasso tool or um, with masks. So this is something that. I use, I, although I do it with a mark, Wacom, you can do it with a, um, uh, with a mouse. Mm -hmm. And this one is a lot of layers here. You can see it's, it looks like a small object, but it's composed of a lot of smaller things. Sorry. So, a photo, painting, and I'll just put them up so you can see how things start to come together. Some photo textures are overlaid. Shadows are painted in. And in the end, it's it and some more structural elements. And then the street below, also composed of, this is just the road, uh, shadows, the lighting, the, the shadow effects of the, the structure, the, the shadows from the structure above. And then atmosphere.
atmosphere always very important. The cars, for example, here in the the front car, you can see the this was important. These reflections. This is the car I had. Then I changed the colors, the shadows of the structure I painted in, and the reflections are also painted in. This is not something scientific. It's just I I think I have more or less an idea of what these structures of what these reflections would look like, and then I I just paint them in and distort them so it makes more or less sense. And in the end, the the post production layer to to make everything a bit more blue, these glows from above, and the volume light, and then the final color adjustments. And uh, next, well, these pro the process. So you can see here the four renderings that the client gave me, and these are the final four images. Um, this is for Magic, the Gathering. <laughs> this was my first assignment for them. It's a, it's a, a company that, it's a game, very world famous. Um, and these illustrations are quite small uh, in the cards, but they, they require some resolution from, 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 the, from the artists that do work for them. Um, and I think, yeah, I did, I did these four simultaneously. Four or five, yeah. And this is a funny story for, for this painting. It, it was done in 2012. Uh, and when my, my twins were born, uh, there was, everything was upside down and I had no time for anything. And we had to, me and my wife, we had to wake up at, uh, Midnight, to one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. So there is no life is different when, when when the kids are so young. And so I did these. This painting was done was painted at two o'clock in the morning, at four o'clock in the morning, at uh, three o'clock, and uh, uh, and it's uh, I'm quite satisfied. So I ended up dedicating this uh, this painting to my. To, to my kids with uh, with the title of the the painting, but um, uh, now I have already uh, more time to paint and things are already back to normal. But at the time it was uh, a bit difficult to to find time to to paint. Um, again, fantasy landscapes, some of, more painterly, some less. One of the things that. Uh are really nice in your paintings is the, the atmosphere. No? When, when yeah, which uh, again is, is is related to that trick that I showed you with the color dodge layer. Um, it's something that people point out, and in the end, it's it's more or less like this: it's it's dark in the image and paint in the light, um, and try to create a lot of uh, contrasts. This was done again for uh, for that uh, card game, Magic the Gathering. Here again, atmosphere is something that's... When you introduce color dodge layers and a lot of haze and fog and mysterious things, that's always something that works well. Here also atmospheric uh, lighting effects of the light showing through the through the architectural structure. <coughs> Here is an exercise that was very good for me. Um, you, you think it's the same, but uh, these on the left are all they, these are cinema. They are screenshots from a movie. It's it's Willow. It's a fantasy moving movie from the from the eighties, and on the right. Uh, I tried to copy the the painting. The, the, it's important because these these shots from these movies. When you see a movie, you think, yeah, they just put the camera and they started to to shoot. But no, there is a lot of composition involved, and each shot is very meticulously um, uh, done. So. You, you think everything is random, but no, everything has been thought about. 
so it's a very good base to, to study from. And also the colors. So it's a great exercise for me to, to try to copy these. From here it looks the same, but when you're closer, you, you understand that um, on the right is painted, on the left it's the, it's the photo. And sometimes I do these because it's a, it's a great exercise. Here, black and white studies is more like a, st a storyboard. Here, the same, but the same kind of studies, but with color. Um, this one I picked from one of these black and white. Here, this one on top. I just took it and resized it and started to paint in detail and um, add color. But when you resize one of your favorite paintings, um, well, I guess that the resolution is very low. When, when you resize, you have to, I, I don't know how to say it, you have to add uh, not only yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, you to, if to you clean the, the edges and everything, I guess. No? If you take, take it like this, it's very rough and here you can see the pixels if you resize it in Photoshop it's a bit uh, soft the edges but um, that's no problem it's it's just a matter of painting painting and zooming in and painting with smaller and smaller brushes and it's something very gradual uh, to get from here to here it's I don't know probably three four hours spread throughout uh, two or three days so it's not something very that goes from it's not immediate, so it takes some time to, to get to that stage. So when you're painting, you are probably doing like three paintings at the same time, or four paintings? <laughs> uh, no, for example, now for, for Patreon, where I release two, sometimes three paintings a month, it's good to work on two, two simultaneously. Um, and sometimes for a client, now I recently did uh, seven or eight paintings, the, the deadline was quite short, so I worked on the eight paintings uh, for four weeks, but I always sent updates of all the paintings, and it helps a lot to work on several paintings at the same time, because you always have a fresh look on the paintings and you see what's wrong with them. Um, but sometimes I only work with one, but I always do a lot of intervals. Again, for Magic the Gathering. Sometimes I, I pick paintings that I thought were finished uh, in the past. And two years later, I just pick them up and, um, and continue to work on them. That's something I did for this. It, it, the, other, the other version was two years old, so I thought, no, this can use some more work and let's let's go ahead from there. This is something also that I love to, to paint, these trees and these giant forests. And there was a, a period where, I don't know, two or three months, that, that was almost the only thing I was painting. Um, again, forests here. That's something that I don't have, uh, I probably should do more often is to, to have a backstory. Um, but this one is called uh, Dangerous Roads, so it's a story of this maiden who is on a horse, but if on close inspection you can see that these two riders are following her, and they are framed here between these uh, uh, trees, but they are in shadow, so you see something, you can even see the her clothes are blowing, so she must be in a haste. She probably realized that she's being followed, but that's something also that works in the paintings. If you give the if you give the viewer some hints to a story and the, the viewer completes the, the rest of the image, it's always very entertaining for for the person who's um, looking at your painting. If you get that person involved, um, when you uh, when you paint, do you use uh, many references? I mean, when you start to think about a project. Um, yeah, I, I have a, an example here. Um, 
There's a great software, it's called Pure Ref, and here you can see this is something that I have open on my second monitor. Um, I have here references from other artists, thumbnail sketches that I, that I, uh, I, I don't know why I can't pan. Okay. Uh, and I look at them, I can zoom them in, look just as one part, but these are mostly for inspirational purposes, the, the works from the other artists. And then there are also photos that I use or to get ideas for colors or to get ideas from composition. But I, I try not to stick to one painting exclusively. These, I, I collect these images from other artists, from photos that I think will make, that are very inspirational. And then I put them all in this program and I reference them uh, while I'm doing the painting it. So, but most of the time, if you use too much reference, especially in the beginning, it's, it has advantages and disadvantages um, because the painting process should be something very gestural and loose. And if you stick to, to photos uh, too closely, it's, it cannot, it, sometimes it's, it doesn't help. But um, yeah, sometimes I, I, I use references and sometimes even I, I put a small photo next, for example, to this tree, I might take a tree, a photo of a tree and put it here beside the other tree and then I can closely uh, reference it and start to, to get all the details and information that I need from there. But most of the time I, I don't use reference very closely, it's just uh, sometimes for inspiration, other times to to, to get some details out. Uh, here, these three paintings are very... I did this first. It's uh, related to, to, some, to um, a building here in Sintra, which, which, is a, which is a very romantic fantasy uh, place with forests and palaces here in, near to Lisbon. And it has very interesting trees. I wasn't very satisfied, so I tried to do this one. Uh, let me just close the door. And um, and then I ended up with this one, which um, so the the architecture is always very very similar, but um, the in the end. I think all of the all of the three images are are valid, and uh, I just wanted to try and improve on one from the other. Science fiction, um, again, fantasy with giant uh, waterfalls and these kind of uh, I don't know tribe who works who who live among these trees that are built. On these, uh, on this waterfall, again for uh, Magic the Gathering. Okay, when you make a, a project for Magic the Gathering, um, do they tell you, uh, for example, like the video game, that they give you an idea, or is like you can make whatever you want? No, these, these, they, the Magic the Gathering. Uh, Basically, I, the only work I do, did was for the environments. There, there is a type of card that's called the land card. Uh, I don't play Magic the Gathering. I don't know the rules, but uh, but each land card. This is the forest. Uh, this is the sea, I think, or island. Uh, I think this is the mountains, and this is the plains or swamp. Ah, this is the swamp. Uh, so they always have these uh, five, I think, um, land cards, and all of them revolve around a specific color. Um, and they just give me um, a line of text, one or two lines of text of what they want to show. And in this case, they also have these kind of objects. Um, but it's a very vague idea. They give a lot of... Um, Liber uh, freedom to the artists to come up with their own ideas. Um, but I 
think most of the clients understand that if the, if they if their idea is too constricting, the the artist doesn't produce their best work. So they they give you ideas and references, but they like to to give the artists freedom freedom to come up with their own ideas. Uh, these two concepts for. I think, yeah, they were for a mobile game. I don't think it was ever made, but it was to show uh, the end of the world. Um, yeah, in fantasy, on a treehouse. I did some paintings inspired by the, there's a very famous Chinese river that I don't remember the name now, uh, but it has these giant rock formations uh, along the river and it looks great. And these kind of photos are very inspirational and I come up with all these ideas of creating this new fantasy, um, new fantasy landscapes and worlds. This was my first work for Patreon. Um, Patreon is basically, I create the works for my portfolio, and uh, but I put them up on, on Patreon. I, I, I do always, uh, there's a theme each month. This one was this, uh, I think there's one, no, sorry. This painting and this painting were, the inspiration was Machu Picchu and uh, the structure. Oh, sorry. Sorry, we can't. And these are three simultaneous. I will show you now. I will show you a video um, of how I created. Andreas, hey, we're going to stop this for 10 seconds just yeah, for the. Sure for the record because the video yeah, is going no, to be no, no. too long. Um, this is the process, the video I'm going to show you is the process, the, the painting. Um, and I've recorded it in real time, but I won't show it to you in real time. Uh, but you can have more or less an idea of the process of the time. So this video to create these images was is one hour and 35 minutes. And uh, I will just, I will speed it up a bit so you don't see the whole, and then I will jump some, so speed, yeah, four times. I don't, I don't work this fast, so <laughs> at the beginning I create three images, three separate layers that I will use at base, as a base to create, and here's a good example of working on uh, several sketches simultaneously. I vary the, the value so they don't all look the same right from the beginning. And then I start to paint with a very um, rough uh, brush because it's, if it's too defined, it doesn't help. You got and it ready. <laughs> So here you can see working in black and white. Um, I tried to find a balance of of darks and lights, but nothing very. I don't have a. I just have an idea of a forest for one, cliffs for another. But while I paint, the slowly the image evolves. So I'm going to skip now a bit forward some parts. And you can see that I'm working with relative low contrast because when things don't have much contrast at this stage, it helps me to evaluate uh, the image. Then I start, you can see that I'm jumping between paintings. Uh, I, try, I start to introduce things a bit further away. Here a path starts to evolve. I'm going to make big jumps now. And you can see that I 
I start with large brushes and then they gradually become smaller and smaller until I start to build, to work in the details. Okay, wait, it's here. Now, this is more or less the, the values and the details are defined and now I start to apply more contrast. And I keep the image very, very dark because I know I'm going to do that color dodge trick to, to bring in the light. First, I give an all, overall color here. You can see in, I create a layer in overlay mode. And I'm going to apply three different colors to the, to the three sketches. One in browns, one in greens, and one in blues, I think. Yeah. Low contrast. And then here you can see the magic starting to happen. This layer in color dodge mode. And then I paint in the, with a brush. And here I start to, to paint in the, the sunset. I'm going to skip forward. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. <laughs> no problem. Do they paint as well as you do? Uh, yeah, they, they do very basic, uh, but they don't. They are four years old, so they don't have any idea of what I do here. Uh, well, you can see here on the timeline to get to this stage is uh, 34 minutes. Um, I probably did this in two sessions or so, but. Um, then, so once I get to this stage, I, I should have the image more or less uh, established. And then it's just a matter of applying more details. And now I'm going to make large jumps. And the brush, you can see I'm starting to introduce small details like uh, branches and twigs and small text and textural details and some characters to give scale to the scene. I'm also zooming in more. It's impressive to see how you pass from brushes, like really, uh, really raw stuff till something already cooked, I mean... Yeah, but it's also important to not work with the whole image. I'm just giving details here, for example, to this writer, but some other areas are very rough, and I'll leave them like that. Mm -hmm. and, but this is also a sketch. Some of the clients want the image more finished, and then I have to give detail to, to everything, but it's important not to over-detail the image, otherwise it, it's it gets boring and there is no interest. Again, that idea that I talked to you before of leaving contrast between detail also. Some areas are detailed, some are rough, and so the eye keeps jumping from one part of the image to the other. And, well, okay, here, these are the final stages. So this is after one and a half hours, and then yeah, the painting is done. Um, so, in the video, the, the, the contrast is, there's not so much contrast. This is the way I work, the way you see here. Uh, there's a, a less contrast in the video. Um, this, is, this started as a sketch I did with my uh, on iPad Pro, and then I took the sketch, it was a, a rough, a pencil sketch and then I took it into Photoshop and then I finished it there. Here are a lot of uh, photo textures uh, right from the beginning in the, in the, um, in the sketch phase. This was done for a book cover, again here with layers, it's not so painterly, each 
There's a layer for the trees, a layer for these trees, a layer for the rocks, a layer for the characters, a layer for the, the background, one for the castle. This is the, you can see, uh, it's this, it's this painting. I took, I then took this painting and resized it and, and created this one. You probably, it looks the same, but if you put one on top of the other, you can see this one has a lot more detail in it. This was done for a, a challenge, a competition online, a Star Wars related. Again, for Patreon. Do you sometimes recycle some of your pictures or compositions to, to the new ones? Yes, the, the, uh, I think this one, for example, was an old painting that I didn't like at all, and then I took it from there, and I thought, yeah, I can reuse this as a. I can see everything that's wrong, and I'm going to start and going to try and do a good painting. And the other painting was very unsuccessful; nobody liked it. Uh, I can see more or less when a painting is successful, but this one was very successful. Uh, so yeah, I do a lot of recycling of paintings that that didn't work out. Here, I included this one and the next one, this was the, um, the sketch, more or less, and uh, then I took this one and did a detailed version. But most, most of the people, and I think myself included, prefer this rough version, but sometimes the client needs a, a more finished version. That's this one. Um, there are some uh, overlays of photos. This one also had photos, but here the image is cleaner and sometimes I have to work the, the image to this stage. Sometimes it's even better not to show the client this version and just show them the, the finished one. Because they will say, yeah, but the, the sketch looked much better and now it doesn't look so interesting. And it's, it's difficult because the sketch always has that appeal of not being finished mm -hmm. and the viewer completes the, the details in his mind. Inspired by the Great Wall of China, that was one also one of the themes for my Patreon. Uh, this is a thing that I did for. Uh, I'm not doing it anymore, but was to explain. More or less, after painting the image, I analyzed it and saw the things that worked and didn't work. And um, uh, are you interested in this part or no? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, of yes. course. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know if you can. I think you can read the. I don't know how big your 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 display is there, but I have this small text where I'm going to read. Inspired by classic mysterious houses and movies like Psycho and Evil Dead. I don't know. You probably saw this. These movies, if you like horror movies, Evil Dead is a classic horror movie and there's a, an abandoned shack in a forest and it's very charismatic and it, it's great. You know you're not supposed to go in, but that is all you want to do. So that's mostly what happens in horror movies there. You know you shouldn't do that, but the, the actors always end up doing what they shouldn't. Uh, the chosen light, color scheme and surrounding landscape all complement the mysterious character of the house and should make you want to go in even when you know you shouldn't. So I took after doing this image, I, I analyzed it and I pointed out these things. Edge treatment edges are treated differently depending on degree of importance. Less important, these I'm going to show these areas are less important because I want the eye to focus on this structure. So you can see these edges are very rough. And here these edges of the trees and sorry and of the house are very defined because this is where i want the viewer to look most then crooked lines the 
the tree is composed of uh, lines that are oblique, are, um, are on various angles, so how it's composed of oblique lines, which gives it the idea it is about to crumble at any moment. It doesn't give it stability. You can see it's something that's very unstable, so it adds to that mysterious feeling. Um, silhouette character. Main structure defined by pointy shapes, triangle shapes, which gives it a sinister character. So dynamic, it's very dynamic, and these pointy shapes give it also a lot of character, like spikes. Oh, sorry. This edge tree, which prevents the eye from the eye of the viewer from leaving the canvas. So this this tree wasn't wasn't placed uh, on random. It, it has a function here. So this is also something that I these magenta lines show the viewer's eyes. You start to scan the image here, then you go through here, through here. You ex start to explore. It may look like, no, I don't look at the image like this, but I think unconsciously we scan, we, we enter the image and start to visit it. So I have this bridge with, which welcomes you into visiting and exploring this area. It's done all very quickly, but ultimately I think that's what makes a painting su successful or not. Um, and then areas of low contrast here, there's... It's less contrast, here's more contrast because it's also backlit. And um, I think I think that's that's what I analyzed for, for this image. Um, again, an image that was recycled from the past. I, it was already, people already liked it, uh, but I thought, no, it can get even better. So I took it and you cannot see the previous step, but this is the final image. Um, Again, Blade Runner inspired. This is also something that's uh, usually successful is to contrast of cold and overall images cold in cold colors with some warm accents. Again, the, the, the three sketches. And this one is interesting uh, because I took let me see. Uh, it was a painting that was quite successful. This one, it's called Fields of Gold. This is the second version. The, the first version, I think, is from 2011. Then five years later, I took it and detailed and corrected parts that I thought could be corrected. And then I thought, the, the challenge for me was to come up with a different image that used all the qualities qualities of this image, and that's this. Uh, sorry, and this is what. So this is the original, and this is what I came up. Large structure in the middle, small character, a very warm field that almost looks like it's on fire, and very hazy atmosphere all around, and. It was more of a challenge because I usually don't do this. Uh, it's like copying my own painting, and I try to keep the, the paintings new and don't don't do the same again. Sorry, going back to the year again. Uh, analyze it. Uh, well, for this one, it's it's no need to to explain it, but. I don't, when I'm painting, I don't think about all these things. Uh, these are things that I, are done subconsciously, and then in the end, I analyze it and make them clear. It's, I think it's something that comes from experience. And this was one of the final paintings I did. I think I completed this last week. It's also something that I, I started with color right from the beginning. Uh, but people were very, I think this was very, people liked this painting a lot and I'm very satisfied with it. It's Both of these paintings were done for Patreon and the um, subject was Lake Bled, which is a lake in Slovenia. And it's a, it's a very nice area and has a small island in the middle with a small church on, on this island and it's, it looks... It looks great. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the reference. 
this was this was the reference. Uh, I took this image from the internet, uh, so you can see the the island with the church in the middle, and it's great. And you can swim here. I, I was there too, twice, and it, it's it's really great. And uh, you can go there by boat, or you can swim there. And I I had never seen the the this lake in winter, so these were some of the images that I used as um, inspiration to come up with this and, and this. So now this, uh, my portfolio is presented and um, I have some more videos. Should I show you, do you want me to show the one I did for last year's students? Uh, I did it, uh, one of them, yes, I think it's... Okay, uh, so, <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so this is the last year, um, yes, uh, we gave Andreas images of the contest for the city of the justice, the yeah. justice city. Mm -hmm. uh, well, some of the <laughs> photo, mon photo montages, the photo, photo basing, mm -hmm. and Andreas uh, recolored and retouched some of them uh, for yeah. his, his video. So I took three images and, and improved, improved. This is a scenario that you could have worked. Um, no, I'm showing you the possibilities that you can, that, that can be done with, um, with, if you have Photoshop and a Wacom tablet and you can work with it. So it's taking an image and improving it. So this is the base and this is what I came up with. And I'm going to show you the, the process in a video, and then I'll probably show you the, the Photoshop file a bit more detail. And so here. Okay. So these were the three images. Ah, you didn't see the other two, but I did something different to, to all of them. I think this one was the most successful, but the other two I also wanted to show uh, that it was possible to what you could do. So here I'm, I'm going to speed it up, extending the canvas to have a more panoramic format. You can just stretch the image. Then I paint. I, I, this is a photo I took of a sunset my house. Here I'm using the pen tool. I'm going to pause it. Can, you can accompany all of this, correct? You can see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I'm taking the pen tool, cutting out, so I can place the, the sky behind it. You can see here I'm having, this is the sky layer, and this is the, the layer with the project, with the, the building. I'm resizing it, and then I'm also resizing the sky. <clears throat> then I'm recoloring the, the foreground because it's important to have the, the object to be influenced by the kind of light of the sky, otherwise it will, if you look at the image before, this doesn't make sense. You can see the this is one thing and this is the other. but I apply a layer on top with orange and then I start to remove where I think the color wouldn't hit and start to blend in the color from the sky. Darkening things and starting to to influence the the objects you can again the color dodge layer to create that bright and as if the sun would, would be here on this side. And then I'm painting on top already. Not, I don't care much now for, for the lace. I'm just painting on top. Painting in a path. Using lasso tool. Now jumping forward. Then here I'm, I'm cutting out. I took a photo of a plane with that trail. And I want to place that plane here. But first I have to cut it out using some techniques that it's not worth telling you about them now, but 
I will take this plane and I put it here. Again, it doesn't make much sense. This is our blue colors. I extend the trail and then I recolor it with these warmer colors. And ah, then I took this photo of evening of a, an evening shot of a, of a that has a lot of lights. I cut it out and place it here on the uh, color dodge mode. So the the darks, everything that's very dark doesn't get applied, and everything that's very bright <coughs> shows through. And, and it looks like the the interior of the building is is lived in. So they had, there are people there. Contrast overall. And I think, ah, yeah, and then I still applied some um, color beams, a, shof, a soft glow there, uh, tapering it so it gets wider at the top, copying it, uh, transforming it so it shows to the sides. I'm also going to copy one that is behind the structure, so it gets you. You get a feeling that that there are lights also behind it. Adjust the plane again. And I think I still soften the plane again. And again, I apply a blur, and that's it for this image. And uh, sorry, so it might take this here in Photoshop. You can see it. I'm going just to show you the layers. This is the, the original sky layer. The uh, sky I applied on top. The project. Recoloring with an overlay layer. Photo filter to, to make it blue on this side. I'm, I'm not applying the... I'm not applying the filter to the whole here in the middle, I'm not applying it, so I want to leave this warmer area. A glow here. Some painting on top. The um, plane. Additional contrast. The lights inside the building. And in the end, the, the search lights. And then for the... For the other two, I I thought this was a very a bit sad looking, and um, I know architects like to show desaturated projects, and I think it mostly it works. I think it and probably I I overdid it here, but I just wanted to show the possibilities of changing this into a more uh, a daylight scenario. Um, again, cutting out the project, applying. A blue sky behind, and cutting out some green trees, and, and a, a green lawn. Cutting out those trees, applying them there behind, a red tree, cutting out the, the trunk and the trees. And then I, I painted the, the rest. This was done very roughly, so I didn't want to spend much time here. It's just to give an idea. Painting in the trunk here below, giving it a shadow. Shadow is always very important to integrate the, the thing that you are placing inside the image to give it some attachment to the ground.
some fallen leaves on the on the ground. Then in the end, the overall color balance to bring all of the things together. So here you can see what the before and the after. <laughs> and yeah, some still some color darkening on the right side, brightening there to give the idea that the uh, that the light is coming from the left. And here this was very rough just to just to to emphasize the feeling that this is a rainy day. Again, cutting out the project, applying some cloudy sky in the back. One of the things that we spoke, one of the things that we spoke about last year, is that in, in architecture visualization, uh, when people make renders or images or whatever, they tend to be too white, no? the lack of color, and with low saturation. Uh, and you said that you wanted to make them more colorful because. Yeah, more, more or less. Sometimes it. I think most of the time it works because you want to show the project and um, and you want to focus on the forms and the lights and the darks and the shadows, and the environment shouldn't be the the main focus. But I think uh, if you make it too white and too desaturated, you're losing also other possibilities to. For example, here I think it was too white. If you do a dark green. Um, sky, you give more the impression that it's a rainy day. Uh, for this one, I think I overdid it. It doesn't. This is for perhaps for the um, for the regular people who are not architects who are they want to see what the project could look like in real life. Uh, but for an architect uh, to analyze the project, probably he gets more. It's more interesting to show. Um, the project with low saturation. And um, what more here? I also wanted to show you an example of uh, um, here how I create. This is this could be a process. Of course, you need the. Um, you need the the experience to to paint on a on a on a tablet and using uh, digital tools, but this could be something of a this could be a, a page of your sketchbook uh, when you're creating when you're testing out ideas for a new project. Uh, here I was testing ideas for a shot inside a library, and here you see the final result. But well, I'll show you the video. So these are all small sketches that explore camera and some of these two I also explore some color. But mainly it's composition, uh, camera angle and values and light. And here's the, here's the video. Speeding it up again. using the lasso tool to get some defined edges from the start. Yeah, sorry. This is, uh, <laughs> I'm not a magician. Uh, this <laughs> the computer crashed, so I didn't, uh, I didn't record this, this step, but you will see it in the, in the next, um, in the other sketches. Sometimes I play gradient, gradients. Here I knew I wanted to have a, a tall window in the back. Then I paint some some tree, some tree, some some books, and then I copy them, and I use that to to make the the bookshelf. Now it, they all look the same, but in the end I I paint in some variation so they don't all look the same. Here I'm painting in some tabletops. I darken the top. Working this small is great for exploring ideas because you don't have to 
you're not um, contrived. You, you're not. Uh, you don't have to stick to one idea too closely. It's very loose because you work so small. You're not worried with details. You're all only worried with the overall look of the image and the overall balance between lights and darks. Can just skip a bit forward. Here I'm introducing some variation to the books. Here I, and some of them I do this, some very basic perspective lines. I don't put up a grid, a perspective grid. I know more or less how perspective works and you don't have to be very precise here. And then, but this is, I don't, I only do this line work uh, in the beginning. Then it's mostly painted in all the way all with values. I don't stick with line uh, too much because I want to see right from the beginning how the values work, the darks and the lights and all the areas. Yeah, I, I also did this here to speed up the process, copy some objects so I don't have to paint each window and then I introduce some vari variation afterwards. Ceiling, the, the light coming in through the windows, volume light. And again, lasso tool, I have some idea of the perspective. these lighting effects are always very they always work very well I apply them with an airbrush and paint and paint in softly the bookshelf uh, in these uh, uh, drawings you were improvising or it was uh, you had a previous idea of the what do you want to want Sorry, I, I, I didn't understand that question. But, uh, <laughs> if, uh, when you do this kind of drawings, did you have a previous idea? or uh, No, as, uh, the only idea. idea I had with this one was, what was uh, uh, an interior shot of a library. But uh, I had on the second screen some, some photos of, uh, that I took from the internet of libraries that looked old and would fit a fantasy setting. Um, but sometimes I have an idea that it's it's a corridor. Sometimes I have an idea where a window could be. But most of the time, the idea only evolves from what I'm seeing on the screen. So here I'm doing a corridor. I think I want to do some books here. I don't know. For example, here I knew I, I wanted to, to do um, a top-down view, something you're looking down. The shelf, although in the end you, you can't really understand what's happening here, but this is supposed to be a window, and these are walls, and these are the books on the shelves. Um, but I don't have, I don't think I have the ability to, to envision, to have the idea of the painting inside my head. I have to put it uh, on the canvas, in this case the, the computer, and from there I can start to evaluate and understand what works and what doesn't work. And, and I also think that's how most of the artists work. They work visually. They don't, they don't have a clear idea in their minds. Just, uh, and sometimes when I'm drawing and painting very loosely, I just start to paint. And I don't know if it's a sci-fi, it's a fantasy, if it's a landscape, if it's an interior. The, the idea just starts to evolve as I'm painting. But other times I have a, a theme that I want to follow, and in this case it was the library. And also, after having done some sketches, because this this side of this page helps, because um, I can see what has already been done, and I try to explore and come up with an with a new idea. So this top-down view in a square format was I did it because I had already done these other sketches. So I compare one one with the other and can try to come up with new ideas. So this is the exploratory sketches. They 
like when you are exploring a, a new project, you you do small sketches and you compare them one with each other, with one with the other, and you can see that some are better than the others. If you do an isolated sketch on a page, you don't know if it's good or if it's bad. If you don't have if you have uh, other sketches to compare them to, you you can better evaluate if it's good or bad. And sometimes after I have these, you will see that after I've done these sketches, I go back to some of them to, to try and improve them and always comparing them with each other and seeing what works and what could be improved. Uh, here it, it was an error of the recording. Uh, I had done this already, but now you can see how it was done. And doing these architectural interiors, I, lo a lo I use a lot of the lasso tool uh, because it gives me straight edges. You can see this when I'm doing these, picking these um, corners. Because when you're working with architectural sketches or paintings, it's very important to have uh, defined edges that follow perspective. If everything is painted, sometimes the, the edges get um, undefined and, and the, the eye is, is a bit lost. It's very forgiving when you're doing a landscape or a forest or some mountains. You don't exactly need those defined edges. They don't follow a strict perspective. So you can you have a lot more freedom. But with these interiors, it's important to have straight edges that somehow follow the, the perspective grid, the perspective rules. So you, this whole page uh, took me, you, you will see, in, uh, here you can see I'm going back to the sketch, uh, but the overall is one hour, almost two hours. Um, and this was, I don't remember, but it was most certainly done in two or three sessions. Uh, I don't. I usually don't work for more than one hour on a painting. I do an interval for I don't know twenty minutes sometimes a day. But if I you if I paint too much on a painting, if I paint too long on the same painting, I start to lose uh, perception and uh, I don't see the mistakes that I'm doing. So it's it's good to do a lot of intervals. And in these next, in this one, I yeah, I I try to apply color straight away. And with these sketches, I'm always trying to learn new things, so I'm always experimenting things that will work better. Uh, I don't have my technique defined. I I I'm always trying out new things, comparing them to things that I already did, and in the end, I compare them to see what worked better than and what didn't. And for Patreon, that's because I'm doing videos that I'm selling to people and I have to give them products that are, that have some quality. And there are a lot of videos that I do that I end up throwing away because they didn't work. And I'm always learning new things and exploring and Here, for example, this one I, I started with color right away. Here, no, I'm I'm starting with in black and white, and then applying color on top with a blue overlay and then a yellow glow in the middle. And again, I just had the idea of a giant sphere with lights inside a library, but with nothing defined. The the ideas evolve as I'm doing these sketches. I go back to this sketch, apply another part of the staircase in front, a railing, and working this small, I don't have to worry too much about perspective. I can have a global idea of, of the way things are working. But when I resize the image, if I want to do a final image, then I have to be more careful with perspective. I do some perspective guidelines on top to, to get the perspective right. When a 
starts to get in, in the final stages, you you start. It gets less obvious what I'm doing, but there are a lot of uh, small details that are very important. Although they may not look like it, but it's ultimately it's what gives it some realism. Um, I sometimes, for example, I'm going to show you now another video of of this one. You can see that uh, here until this stage, with which is about um, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes into the painting, and it already looks very similar. Sorry. Uh, It looks, I don't have it, it looks very similar to the end product because almost two thirds of the painting are for details and finishing up the image. But in the, the first third, a lot of things changes. It almost looks like the whole painting is done. It's very fast in the beginning and then the same two, two um, last thirds are detailing it, cleaning up. Uh, there are no not very drastic changes. Uh, but to explain a little better, this, this painting was the one I... This was the reference painting I had done before. And I color picked, for example, this. Here I, I didn't have to worry about colors because working in colors is also a challenge. If you have already the palette, the color palette defined, I just picked the color from this image because I knew I wanted to, to keep these images, uh, to, to keep these colors. Uh, but when I have to come up with uh, new colors, it's, it's a bit more complicated. Um, well, I don't know if it's, this, this is boring, if you want to ask me any questions now or... <laughs> No, actually, well, I, I have one question. Um, so why do you think that, well, it's not related to this painting, but why do you, th well, this painting, I have another question. <laughs> because uh, even when you have your palette of colors, uh, I think it's not easy to, ha uh, to achieve the same, a similar result, because if you compare the original and the last picture, they have uh, the, same, the same color of fire, the same color of the environment, uh, I mean, in, even if you have the colors and you can you can select the color, it's difficult to to, to get that. But uh, sorry, you're asking me how I no, no, how no, sorry, I no, apply no, no, the sorry, colors or it was, no? It was not a question. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Yeah, the, uh, in this case, for example, the, yeah, the, the the initial image looks very similar to the final one, um, but there are other cases when. There are a lot of color changes throughout the, the process. For example, I'm going to show you here another one, only the step-by-step. The step. Uh, no, here. Here, I uh, start in black and white. And here I'm applying some colors, but if you compare for example, in this stage, I sh the color should have been defined. But if I show you the, the last step, you will see it's a lot more magenta and blue. And from here to here, there is a big color change. So sometimes color is also explored. And um, I don't have a de defined idea of what colors uh, should be from the beginning. But uh, one, one stage that I do a lot in the, the final stages is this post-production where, where I introduce the glows and the uh, small or uh, atmospheric perspective, aerial perspective, and that's very important to give that all uh, last uh, tweaks to the image. They, they make a, a big difference. Um, here I can show you how this was created. Oh, yeah. 
from, so from here, here the, the image is still small, and then I resize it and start to introduce all the smaller details and cleaning up the image. And introducing this character and these final then details. And another one. And do you think that um, if you compare a Wacom tablet with iPad Pro, for example, do you think that you could make a painting like yeah. this one with the iPad with an iPad Pro? Or? Yeah, the, the, there's a. I think it's a mis misconception, no, um, because the iPad Pro is similar to the to the Cintiq, uh, so there's one way of painting. The way I paint, I have the tablets on my table and I'm looking at the screen while I'm painting. So I don't know, I'm not looking at the pen at the same time as I'm, the pen is not, I don't see the pen at what I'm drawing. Uh, but that has a big advantage because when you have a pen, it covers the area that you are painting. Something that you, that you, I only understood when I tried out a Cintiq. And I tried, I started to paint and I thought, yeah, well, I'm not seeing exactly what I'm painting. It's, so it's, it has some advantages to play, to, to paint with a, with a tablet, with a Wacom tablet on your table. On a Cintiq and iPad Pro, you have that disadvantage that you're, you can't really see what's underneath the, the pencil, but um, it has a lot more accuracy. And I think the iPad Pro finally because I, I tested some others and also the older iPads, but the, but it didn't. The, the precision was was not there, and and the iPad Pro it it almost looked like you're painting on a on a sketch, on a on a sketch pad. Um, but the the big disadvantage of the iPad Pro is that it's very expensive. If you do that kind of investment, you have to use it. Uh, it's not something. Oh, I'm going to I go and buy an iPad Pro to test it. Uh, if you want to buy an iPad Pro, you have to use it. And there are other cheaper tablets, um, but there's always the. If you want to to take this seriously, you you should always go for probably go for Wacom. Um, but um, but if you you want to try it out, of course, uh, it's best to to use some other brands. And and I have some of the the work I did at the beginning. I started out with the Wacom, but then afterwards I started to buy small tablets. My my Wacom broke, and other brands. But but now, since I'm doing this professionally, I I I try to buy only the the best uh, hardware. Um, I tried the Cintiq once, but it was uh, seven seven years ago, I think, and I didn't like it at all. Uh, the, the contrast wasn't so good because the screen isn't that good. There was a bit of lag, and I think that there is still lag. Um, and my eyes got tired very quickly from looking at the screen. The, the screens that I buy that are just for display are, are better than a, than a Cintiq because they have more quality, because they are just screens. Um, but um, I think the, the, the tablets for drawing are will become each time more responsive and for, for sketching that architects do in smalls, they will use it, end up using, I think they will end up using tablets because it's much quicker, you can apply color, uh, you can save all your files, all your sketches. Um, even if people say, oh, but you lose that feeling of the pencil and the, and the paper, but you gain other things, so... I think it will be so versatile to, to use a tablet as a sketching pad. I think it will end up replacing the, um, the normal sketch pads. Which size of uh, tablet? Of the tablet? Yeah. Um, I think this, this tablet is already, I don't know, 10 years old or... Um, I, I cannot see myself, but can you see this tablet? No. Yeah, yeah it's quite big. So it's it's uh, it's not that big. <laughs> um, it's not 
it's not the smallest, but you can work with this one with the smallest, and it's perfect. Uh, I, most of the paintings I did in the beginning, the 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 ones, the better ones, that also gave me the the clients were done with a small tablet, because you you don't want to use the, you want to use the wrist, you want to do small movements, because when you want to work in smaller areas, you just zoom in and Photoshop. You don't have to work smaller on the tablet. Yeah. If you have too large of a tablet, your movements. If you're not using a Cintiq for a Cintiq, it's it's obvious you have to have a large area to paint in. But uh, for drawing on the screen, I have this large tablet, but I only use a portion of it. Um, and I also use a larger portion because I'm changing from one screen to the other. That's one thing that helps a lot. Uh, is having two screens um, because the more area you have to paint the better and I have the references on one page or a website or I don't know a video or something on one side and then there is the main screen for for the painting in the in the main screen so uh, and other things ah you about the software what I use is Photoshop and then there's a, this pure ref that's great for having uh, these reference images and it works very well. It's, it's a great piece of software and it's very cheap. And, and the other program I use that I'm using now to is XNView, which is great uh, to have to, um, to, to browse through images and it's free, it's a free software I think. And it uses tabs here on top, and you can change. You can have very several images open, and you can browse them very quickly. Um, and I think uh, the only yeah, it's Photoshop, the tablet, two screens, uh, XN View, and I think that those are the most important pieces of software. You don't need anything very fancy and. The, the most important thing is that comes to experience. Even the brushes, you don't have to. It's it's not the brushes that do the magic. It's uh, it's working on it. Uh, uh, it's painting every day, and um, the brushes help a bit. But it's like anything. You you have to have uh, it. You have to practice a lot until you get to a certain stage uh, to get to a certain level. And there is no workaround. So, and then, I don't know, learn from other people, but I don't know if this kind of work, that's why I did those, uh, that small demo of the, um, of that uh, rendering to change it, because I think that's an area where you can apply these painting techniques if you, <coughs> if you invest some time to and try a, walking, a Wacom tablet, but it takes time to, to get to that level. Um, but I, I don't think you are. That's what I was discussing with Federico. It's uh, this is more of something out of curiosity for you, I think, for to see what is possible. But since you are working on, a, you're taking a, an architecture course. You you want to be architects. Um, for me, I took an architecture degree, but it was definitely not the way I wanted to 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 go. Uh, I like architecture. I I appreciate it. I like to look at the buildings, and I can see when a uh, when a when a building is has its qualities. But ultimately, what 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 I like doing the most is really painting and doing these uh, fantasy artworks and and things like that. Um, and for you, I think you can apply it to, to mix uh, because you will have to present your projects to clients uh, and. Clients get attracted to things that are visually appealing, and if you have just a, a rendering, there is a second stage that you can do in Photoshop to to bring out the best out of your rendering. Because I remember I also worked in a company that for three years I don't know if I said that I think so for three years doing renderings, but there was always the post production part of adding the people, changing the sky, painting in the glows. Uh, and that was very important when it wasn't uh, a video, when it was an animation, it's, it's completely different. But when you have to present a still to a client, 
it's very important that uh, that you do a, a post production to 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 bring out the best um, out of the out of the painting out of the three D render in this case. Uh, here, uh, using reference side by side to to bring out the, the these gothic architectural details. It's very important to have when you, when it gets to these details. It's it's good to have a reference side by side. I'm not copying it exactly. I'm just getting the overall or overall idea of. Of, of these details. I think I was looking at the spires and the tops of these structures. Um, and another thing that I have in my computer that's very valuable is, is uh, a lot of reference folders. Uh, fol uh, folders for photos of things I, I like, especially in, from nature, mountains, coastal areas, forests. And then I have another folder of all the artists that I that inspire me, um, and that's also things that you can do in with your architecture-related practices. It's, it's to have folders organized by architects uh, or uh, uh, situations that interest you of light entering a building, and then once you start, uh, when you have to project your own buildings, you just go to that reference folder and use that as inspiration and. I don't know. Copy and copy the ideas of other architects, because uh, I think that's the saying. Nothing is invented. Uh, everything is copied. So you just have to copy from several ideas from several uh, sources, and then you can up, can come up with your new um, new ideas. But it's very important for me and my workflow. It's one of the most valuable things I have. Is the reference photos and reference paintings from, from other paintings. I have a large quantity of paintings that I, I visit daily, these CG art forums, where I copy copy these images from other artists to my folders, and I'm very inspired by one of the, some of the things that are being done out there, and it's great. And the internet is great to, to, to share and be inspired and, and see what the other artists are, are doing. And it's a very strong and very active community of the, the of CG artists. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you have any question to ask before, before we finish. No. Okay, so... It has been a pleasure for us to be with you one more year. Uh, okay, same so, year. And let's hope that next year we can we can see you again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for listening and not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so see you see Bye. you soon. <laughs>